This Instant Pot balsamic chicken is the perfect Sunday night dinner and you have everything you need in one pot. I'm Justin from Cooking with Coit. I specialize in clean comfort cooking. And remember, if you love this recipe, make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. Let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is prepare our chicken breast. So this is gonna be a little controversial. I don't wash my chicken. I know there are people out there that are diehard chicken washers, but when you pop it in the oven or you pop it in the Instant Pot or you put it anywhere, the heat is gonna kill all the bacteria, so I don't wash my chicken. I know. But what I do is I like to trim off the excess fat from the chicken breast before I give them the sear. So let's do that right now. I just grabbed some kitchen scissors. I just give these a little trim and just like this, I'm just getting rid of some of that fat. Uh, so I look around here. So there's some off of here too. Just give this a little cut. All right, now I'm gonna wash my hands because they're all covered in chicken. Next thing we're gonna do is season these chicken thighs. This is a very basic seasoning, salt, pepper, garlic powder, Italian seasoning. This is really all the taste. I did put actual specific amounts in the recipe that's on my website. Uh, link is in the description, but it's really all the taste. So just do what you want. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper first. It is very important though to season both sides of this chicken. Don't just season the top. We're adding a little bit of pepper now. Oh, guys, one thing you're also gonna notice here is that I am doing only four chicken thighs. My recipe calls for eight. The reason why I'm only doing four right now is because I don't wanna waste food. And I know that tonight, I'm pretty much gonna be the only person that eats this because my wife likes only white meat chicken. She doesn't like dark meat chicken. This is my struggle, whatever. So no food waste. I'm only gonna do four, but the recipe calls eight, so just pay attention to that. All right, now I'm doing a little bit of garlic powder. Again, it's just about a teaspoon. Here's the Italian seasoning. All right, now we're gonna flip these over and do the same seasoning on the other side. Uh, one thing that I wanna show you guys that I just noticed that I just kind of forgot that I do is, this is an organizational tip, by the way. I label all of my spices and seasonings uh, straight on the top because my spice drawer over here really only gives me a top-down view. Some great spice companies put the name of the spice on the top of the bottle and I love them, but not everybody does that, so I just do my own label. Next thing we're gonna do is prepare our potatoes. For this recipe, I chose these baby potatoes and they're multicolored. It's not like the colors give them any kind of specific taste or make them taste better than normal potatoes, but I just think they look really beautiful in the final dish uh, when you're plating. So uh, we're just gonna have these baby potatoes. And yes, I did wash these potatoes before. It's kind of weird, I don't wash my chicken, but I wash my baby potatoes, who knows. And some of these baby potatoes are not gonna be perfectly consistent. I've got a big one and I got a small one here. It doesn't matter. They're all gonna cook uh, really nicely together. The key here is the size because when we put the chicken and the potatoes and the carrots together in the Instant Pot to cook so that the cooking time is very similar across all three. Next up, we're gonna season our potatoes. So I'm gonna take these and drop them into this mixing bowl. And the seasoning for these potatoes is really great. I kept it exactly the same as the chicken. So all the flavor profile really is very uh, similar throughout. Who wants to use like a ton of different seasonings for you know one dish? It's nice to be consistent. It's nice just to use a couple things to keep it simple. First thing we're gonna do is add a little olive oil to these uh, potatoes. And I like to add a little olive oil. This is gonna be about a tablespoon. Again, just kind of do it to taste. I like to give these a mix before I start adding the seasoning because I want each potato to have a nice coating of olive oil so that the seasoning sticks all over. We'll give it a quick little toss here. Whoa, flying potatoes. Make sure the olive oil is evenly, as evenly incorporated as possible. All right, now these are ready for the seasoning. Again, we're doing salt first. Just about a teaspoon. Pepper again. Oh, and guys, <laughs> right now we're filming in literally the middle of a construction zone. I've got a bathroom renovation happening up here. I've got a garage renovation happening here. So if you hear it like loud banging or like sawing or even like people knocking down walls behind me, I apologize. It's very stressful. We're just trying to knock these videos out so that you guys have great recipes. Now we're moving on to the uh, garlic powder. Little teaspoon here, kind of do it to taste. And finally, some Italian seasoning. I love, love, love Italian seasoning. It has such a great blend of really beautiful and aromatic herbs and spices. It's just fantastic. Okay, 
Now, let's give this a quick toss and we're gonna set these aside. Next thing we're gonna do is peel our carrots and we're also, after we peel them, we're gonna be cutting them into a one inch length carrot. Doesn't have to be exactly one inch, of course. One inch seems to work best though. Uh, guys, I almost got all the way through cutting these carrots and I forgot to tell you. So what I do is, as you'll see, one end of the carrot is a little thinner than the other end. So usually I just cut it in half, kind of divide it right uh, in the middle, just like this. And then for this half that's a little thicker, I will obviously cut off the end and then I'll split it down the middle and then cut, cut it into my one inch cubes. And the reason for that is, is that I want the carrots to cook as evenly as possible. So the thinner end needs to cook as fast as the thicker end just like this. And then on the skinnier end, you don't need to worry about it. Just cut these one inch pieces and you're done. Now I'm gonna add these carrot pieces to the bowl with the seasoned potatoes and I'm just gonna give it a quick toss. And then we're gonna set this bowl aside. All right, now we're moving on to my favorite part. This is the fun part of the recipe. We're going to be giving these chicken thighs a really good sear in our Instant Pot. We wanna get the skin of the chicken thighs as crispy as possible. So let's turn it on to saute mode. We're gonna let this Instant Pot get to temperature before we add the chicken pieces because we really want a nice crispy sear on these chicken thighs. All right, now we're gonna add a little oil to our Instant Pot. Tablespoon should be fine. And now we're gonna add our chicken thighs. I'm gonna start with them skin side down. Oh! Well, <laughs> I just dropped a chicken thigh. Don't tell anyone. So I'll be making three chicken thighs today instead of eight. Back to the, back to the video. Uh, <laughs> skin, skin side down to start. And that, if you guys can hear that sizzle, I'm gonna get my microphone close to it. That is the sizzle we're looking for. We want it to be really hot and give it a nice, good sear. And if you were cooking, let's say eight of these chicken thighs, that's according to my recipe, here's the downside to that, is that an Instant Pot or a pressure cooker is only so big, so really you could only fit four had I not dropped this one on the ground. Now there's three in there, but cooking eight chicken thighs would require doing it in two batches just kind of annoying. So one little trick that I do is I might do, you know, four chicken thighs in here and then I might grab my cast iron skillet and at the same time do uh, a sear on the other four of them just so that it's all happening at the same time. All right guys, I'm just a little curious now. I was just talking with my cameraman. Let me know in the comments below, you saw me drop that chicken thigh on the ground. Would you A, just cook it and pretend like it never happened and never tell anyone or B, would you throw it away like I did and potentially waste the food? Uh, let me know in the comments below what you would do. Guys, one thing I just realized, uh, my pressure cooker, this is not an Instant Pot, so let's get that out of the way. I don't have an actual Instant Pot brand Instant Pot, but this is a pressure cooker. It does all the same things, so that's number one. Number two is, before I put it on saute mode, that's not the best mode. Uh, on my pressure cooker, brown is the hottest mode and that gives you the best sear for this particular machine. If you don't have a brown mode, that's okay, just use the saute mode. It's pretty much the same, brown's probably just a little bit hotter. But let me show you how these chicken thighs are looking. They are getting super crispy. Hang on, let me grab this one. Look at this, guys. Look at that beautiful chicken skin. Oh my gosh. All right, now I'm just gonna flip these chicken thighs over and cook the other side. Just wanna brown them just like I did for the top. All right, now that both sides of the chicken are fully browned and very beautiful, I'm gonna set the chicken aside on a plate while we work on our balsamic sauce. I am also going to set the Instant Pot to saute mode. While we're waiting for the Instant Pot to cool down a little bit, I am going to mince one clove of garlic. Now we're gonna take our minced garlic and add it to our Instant Pot. And remember, the Instant Pot has already been set to saute mode. And then we are going to add our balsamic vinegar. We're gonna be doing three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. Ooh, balsamic vinegar is so awesome. If you guys haven't cooked with it before, it is just so flavorful and so incredible tasting. And I don't really love a vinegar very often. Like I don't like the, what's the vinegar chips? I don't like vinegar chips. I've never liked them, but for some reason I love balsamic vinegar. Okay, next we're gonna add two tablespoons of butter. 
and we're gonna let this all cook together for just about a minute. We just want the garlic and all the flavors in here to really come together and become fragrant. All right, now we're gonna bring everything together in the Instant Pot. Let's first add our chicken thighs back in. Oh God, this balsamic sauce is already looking so thick and beautiful. The butter does a really cool thing when it mixes with the balsamic and everything just thickens up really beautifully. Let's take our carrots and potatoes, add those back in too. And then what I like to do is just give everything a nice little mix so that you've got some carrots and potatoes sitting under the chicken, you've got some sitting on top. And then we are going to hit stop on our saute mode. Now we're gonna set the pressure cooker to cook uh, on pressure cook on high for four minutes. And of course, we gotta put our top on. This is always so tricky because I'm doing everything backwards. There we go. Ooh, got it that time. And since we're pressure cooking, make sure that the vent is set to pressure. All right, the timer just finished and I've already released the pressure. Let's see how we did. Woo! <gasps> Beautiful, Aman, come get a shot of this. Wow, this looks incredible. All right, this chicken and the potatoes and the carrots and the balsamic sauce came out so beautiful. I cannot wait to give it a try. But before I do, if you love this recipe and you wanna see more just like it, check out my Instant Pot Recipes playlist. Okay, let's give this a try. Chicken came out perfect. Ooh, it's hot. Wow. This Instant Pot balsamic chicken is so incredibly flavorful. And like I said before, you've got everything you need in one pot. Guys, this is such an easy one and it's so flavorful. You've got to give it a try. See you in the next video.